Hello, friends. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Ramon, and today we're doing another installment of my Simplified series. This one, potentially the most important one of them all. Why? Because it's about sunscreen. The most important skincare product you can put into your routine, period, <laughs> point blank. You need sunscreen. No matter what. Before we get into this video, I just want to start off by saying subscribe down below. I bring videos like this to you all the time. And how are you going to know when I upload if you're not subscribed? And if you don't, ring that notification bell. But in all seriousness, the Simplified series is something I plan to do regularly on my channel where I discuss and break down different skincare products, routines, concepts. And on top of that, I do other series such as Fancy Friday on my channel as well. So stick around. I like new friends. And also before I start talking about the subject matter for today's video, I just want to say that I am in no way an aesthetician, I'm not a doctor, but I am a biochemistry student. Therefore, everything I speak of, everything I talk about comes from the perspective of a cosmetic formulation standpoint, as well as just a skincare aficionado. So let's get into it. Sunscreen, sun cream, sunblock, sun milk, SPF. What is sunscreen? Essentially what sunscreen is, it's a product that you apply topically to your exposed areas to protect you from UV light. And it can come in various different forms. You have creams, lotions, spray, powder, sticks, a wide array of options. But essentially they all function very similarly by leaving a even consistent film of UV protection across your face. That's the most important way that you can apply sunscreen to make it work the most effectively, right? So UV light, let's break that down a little bit more. You have UVA rays and UVB rays. Essentially what UV light is, it's an extension of the visible light spectrum as the wavelengths get a little much smaller. So you have UVC rays, which we don't really worry about. They're kind of dealt with in the ozone layer. UVB rays, which are the first rays that kind of come in contact with our skin and penetrate our skin. They don't penetrate as deeply. They're a much larger wavelength. Therefore, they don't get that deep. The damage we associate with them is burn. UVB, burn. Then you have UVA rays. UVA rays have a more powerful wavelength. They're able to penetrate a little bit deeper into the skin layer and they cause the most damage. And that's the rays that we associate with free radical damage and therefore we associate with the breakdown of elastin and collagen in the skin. That's what causes fine lines and wrinkles. It also causes darkness and pigmentation in the skin. It's the bronzy effect we know with tanning. And as a result, it also is the UV light spectrum that causes the most risk with melanoma related cancers in the skin. So UVA, we really gotta look out for her. For a while, because the UVB rays were the most easily detectable signs of UV exposure, that is essentially how we based our entire way of protecting against the protection we could do from UVB rays. That's what SPF actually stands for. That's the number you see on a sunscreen that says SPF. That is the protection you get from UVB rays. It wasn't until much more recently that we really understood the implication, the dangers, the risks of UVA exposure. So as we are becoming a lot more involved in the advancement and the innovation between sunscreen and sunscreen filters, UVA is really the big target as we are trying to combat a lot more of that because that is the more high risk factor with sunscreens with UV lights. And for fun fact, UVB rays can be blocked out by glass. So let's say you're sitting in your living room and you're chilling on your couch next to a window. You're not really being exposed to the UVB because that window is protecting you, but UVA rays are still able to penetrate through that glass and still hit you. And therefore you're getting the full brunt the full effect of that UVA exposure. And that's actually why you should be wearing sunscreen all the time, every time that you're exposed to any form of sun rays. So we'll get into that. So sunscreens, how do they work? They pretty much all work the same. The key is the application. So did you know there's actually an amount you're supposed to apply of sunscreen? Because there is. It kind of gets a little bit technical and a little bit more mathematical, but the technical approximation is about a quarter teaspoon of sunscreen all across your face, your ears, and your neck. That's not including your body. I ain't talking about body today. That's a whole separate thing. You need to put an ample amount of sunscreen in order to reap the full benefits of your sunscreen. If you look at the sunscreen packaging that you have, so grab whatever sunscreen you got, you see that you have specific ratings on the bottle. The most common one that we're familiar with is SPF. Well, SPF is, as I mentioned, the protection from UVB rays. And that is actually the amount of times longer you can be exposed to sun without getting burnt. For example, let's say you are fair and you can get burnt in the sun within two minutes of sun exposure, no sunblock on. With SPF X, you're able to be out X times longer 
without getting burnt. So for example, SPF 50, if you apply an ample amount in the appropriate way of an SPF 50 sunscreen, you're getting 50 times that much longer protection from the sun. So you can be out for 100 minutes without getting burnt, ideally. You also have different ratings to kind of measure UVA, because again, now that we're a lot more familiar with how UVA is really affect us, we're actually starting to rate that protection on sunscreen packaging as well. So Asian sunscreens have PA rating systems. You might also see PPD rating systems. I haven't seen those so much, but I think they're like European or something. But PA is again, the protection from UVA rays. And so the higher the rating system, this is in a plus system. So the more plus is the more protection. So long as you put an ample amount of the sunscreen on your face. There's a rigorous testing, a rigorous research that goes into calculating the SPF and the PA ratings of sunscreen. So you might not got a quarter teaspoon next to you every time you put on sunscreen, but a really good way of kind of ensuring you're applying enough sunscreen whenever you're putting it on every day is I generally do layers and I'll do about three layers this entire area. Doing multiple thin layers ensures that you're putting on enough sunscreen first of all. Second of all, it's allowing the product to really set in and form that even film that is required for a consistent protection across your entire face. But it's also allowing the product to set in. You're not just taking a full quarter teaspoon and lathering that on your face. You're building up that protection that in a manner that's going to be a lot more convenient and a lot more enjoyable for you. Most dermatologists and doctors recommend about an SPF 30 to SPF 50 on average. Generally try to aim higher. Reason being is again, most people do not put the proper amount on. Therefore, if you put less of a higher SPF, you're kind of getting a sufficient lower SPF value protection at least. So let's say you got SPF 50 on, but you don't put enough of it on. You're hopefully at least getting about an SPF 20. I'm telling you how much you should be putting on. I'm going to stress that you should be putting on sunscreen every day, every day, no matter what season, no matter what time of year it is, no matter what the weather is outside, put on your sunscreen every day. I already told you, UVA travels through the ozone, travels through glass, it's still gonna get you. It'll get you no matter what. Even if you're working inside an office building, put a good amount underneath all your makeup, you're gonna be good. And you might be thinking, well, I thought you had to like reapply like every two hours. Kinda, you kinda, you kinda got to, but there's implications behind that. I'm gonna start off by saying that it's 2020. We have advanced in screen technology substantially in the last 50-ish years. And it's gotten to the point where you have really, really photostable sunscreen filters in place now. That reapplication kind of has to do with if the sunscreen filters aren't photostable and therefore they're degrading with UV exposure. Therefore, you need to apply consistently to make sure you're getting full protection throughout the day. In reality, with how sunscreen filters have advanced so much, as long as you put on like a really ample first layer and you're not doing rigorous outdoor activities for a long period of time, getting wet and it's rinsing off or it's the middle of the day in the middle of summer and it's just like high intensity UV, exposure, you should be good in all honesty. Now, if you're dealing with all other stuff, like you're running a marathon in the middle of summer and you're sweating and you're gonna jump in a pool, you might wanna reapply more often, especially if the UV index is really, really high. Sometimes you might wanna reapply though, and that's totally cool. I mean, the whole point of sunscreen is the anti-aging benefits of it. And if that's your tea, Reapplication is gonna be your best friend. You might be wondering, why do I don't need to reapply sunscreen if I put it on already? Sometimes it rubs off. Sometimes it wears down as oils and whatnot interact with it throughout the day. So there's various ways to do that. I know some of the more hardcore like Korean beauty YouTubers will take a nice hydrating toner on a cotton pad, wipe off their first layer of sunscreen, reapply, and then put on whatever cosmetics they want afterwards. But you also, again, it's 2020. Brands like Kula, like Supergoop, like Peter Thomas Roth have really amazing SPF powders and sprays that can go over makeup, on your skin throughout the day to just give you added touch-ups of SPF protection, which are really beneficial if you're someone like me and I got a full beat and I'm not trying to take that off. Now I'm going to add on to that that spray sunscreens and powder sunscreens by themselves are not going to give you adequate protection. It's not enough protection. Again, what's required is a nice, even, consistent, pretty thick film of sunscreen over your entire exposed area. Sprays don't give that to you. Powders for sure don't give that to you, especially considering the amount of sunscreen I told you about. Again, quarter teaspoon. You would need a lot of powder for that. that. Leads me to my next point. Well, what if my makeup's got sunscreen? Measure out how much a quarter teaspoon of foundation is and put that on your face. Don't do that. No. And you might be like, well, what if I do like a light layer moisturizer with SPF and SPF, foundation with SPF, powder SPF? Do all those SPF values add up? And is it like a summation of all those values? No. At most, you have the highest SPF value of all those, which let's say it's your SPF 30 sunscreen. That's why just one light layer of foundation is not gonna give you enough UV protection. It'll give you something, that's somewhere to start, but really consider the amount of UV protection you are getting from such a small amount and how much you really should be applying to get the proper UV value on a packaging. And let's say you want to really amp up your SPF game and really protect your whole body. There are other ways of doing so besides sunscreen. 
something I found out recently. There's UV protective clothing, where it's clothing where the UV protection factor is embedded within the fibers. But you also have things like sunglasses, protect your eyes, especially the areas around your eyes from that UV exposure, the UV damage. Where do you get crow's feet? Where do you start getting wrinkles? Around your eyes. And so getting to the next part, we're gonna talk about the kind of concerns around sunscreen, especially with ingredients and formulations and whatnot. Kind of prefacing that, you've probably heard about like sunscreen filters and mineral filters and like chemical filters. And whenever anyone hears the word chemical drop, they automatically lose their sh and they start getting into this whole thing about, well, that's not good for their body and chemicals aren't good for you. Everything's a chemical, Karen. Everything is a chemical. Water, chemical. Mineral sunscreen filters, technically chemicals. Everything's a chemical. Kind of going off of studies based around chemical filters and sunscreens, people's concerns about them, especially with how they can get into the bloodstream and affect that kind of stuff. You would need so much of a high percentage of these chemical filters for such long periods of time, I'm talking hundreds of years, to even see any form of like effect on the human body that it just, it's insurmountable. Second thing, and something that I am very passionate about is alcohol in skincare. Some sunscreens, especially Asian sunscreens, have denatured alcohol in them. And people are like, well, alcohol is bad for your skin. It's not. Technically. Alcohol and sunscreens really just act as solvents for the SPF filters just to make sure that they're able to really nicely mix and settle in the format of the sunscreens in. On top of that, it just allows the sunscreen to permeate a little bit deeper, but it's also like a really great ingredient to allow other things in your sunscreen to permeate deeper. For example, if your sunscreen has really great hydrating and moisturizing factors or antioxidants or other benefits in them, the uh, denatured alcohol allows those to get into your skin a lot more effectively. So long as your sunscreen has a lot of good moisturizing factors to it, that alcohol is not going to do any damage to you. So different types of sunscreens. As I mentioned, there are mineral and chemical or inorganic and organic. There's a lot of names for them, but mainly it's just how the filters break down. And you have the physical filters and chemical filters and how they react to UV. For the most part, they both function very same way. They absorb UV and convert most of that to heat. Physical, on the other hand, due to the particles that they use and whatnot, also reflect a small amount back. It's about 5%. So let's talk about the actual filters themselves. And now time for my favorite part. Reading the ingredients. Physical sunscreens. There's two main filters, zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. Zinc oxide is kind of like the main filter. It's broad spectrum, which we'll get to in a second. But the issue with zinc oxide in itself is it, in itself, it doesn't have like the most bomb UV protection. You need to have it in high percentages in order for it to be really, really effective. And you'll see that if you see like physical sunscreens, we'll tell you explicitly 14% zinc oxide, 20% zinc oxide. Well, zinc oxide in the higher percentage is not the most cosmetically elegant. I'm gonna be real with you. It's thick, it's goopy, it's white casty. The other physical sunscreen filter is titanium dioxide. Fun fact, zinc oxide, titanium dioxide, those are also pigments used in white paints. Thus that telltale physical sunscreen white cast. Another filter of sorts that you might see in physical sunscreens is iron oxide. And iron oxide is just kind of gives you a little bump up of that UVA protection. It also helps protect, fun fact, against blue light. And blue light is kind of a hot topic right now in skincare. It is the light radiation you get from phones and computer screens. Science is kind of discovering that there is a little bit of might be a little something around that in terms of how it affects our skin. So iron oxide is a great blue light protector. And you might also see it in physical sunscreens because it's what gives physical sunscreens a little bit more of a tint. So they're not so white pasty and a little bit more darker skin friendly. So chemical filters. And if you've watched my channel, you know chemical sunscreens are my ish for a lot of people as well, for a lot of reasons. Let's talk about the filters first. So there's like the OG chemical filters and those are avobenzone, oxybenzone, octocrylene, octanoxate. They're a little bit more older. They are not so updated. They're not so photostable. They're not the most effective chemical sunscreen filters anymore, but those are the only ones allowed for usage in the US because the FDA is a little backed up. So I honestly recommend kind of avoiding those if you can. We have these really amazing cutting edge advanced sunscreen filters and those are I gotta read them, please hold. Tinosaurus S&M, Mixoral XL, Mixoral XX, Juvenal A+, Neo Heliopan AP. And those basically go back to, we've developed more, better, effective, better protecting sunscreen filters, more targeted towards UVA. Because again, now that we know how bad those are, that's kind of our main focus in sunscreen technology. I say are like I'm doing it. I'm not doing it yet. That's my, that's my dream in life though. Those are the sunscreen filters you find a lot in, again, Asian and European sunscreens. And you hear physical and chemical and, Again, going back to people think chemicals are bad, they're not. And there's a couple things to talk about for that. For example, physical sunscreens aren't necessarily more natural. They're minerals, which are natural, but the chemical processing, the things we have to do to those physical minerals in order for them to be 
usable for cosmetics to be a lot more stable in these sunscreen formulas is they have to be exposed to chemicals. So they're coming in contact with chemicals. Nothing, there's nothing natural about these physical filters. Going an extra level, if you're really into like the formulation of things, chemical are also referred to as organic filters and physical are referred to as inorganic filters. And that just has to do with the kind of chemical compound makeup of them. Chemical sunscreens are based on carbon structure chains. So it's still carbon, it's still natural. These are natural things, it's chemistry. While physical, their minerals are ionic compounds. And that's just, again, how they work, how they're structurally made to work with, you know, UV light. And the whole basis of like why Asian and European sunscreens are so much better, first of all, again, more innovative ingredients, better UV filters. There's also different rating systems, different tests that go into sunscreen testing and sunscreen rating. And the US just doesn't cut it the same way. Chemical filters for me are a bigger deal, protecting against the UVA rays for the anti-aging purposes, for the pigmentation purposes. Because again, I mentioned a lot, I really work to treat breakouts in the pigmentation as a result, but also free radical damage, whether it's your collagen, your elastin, your DNA within your skin itself, that free radical exposure and damage is what, again, kind of exacerbates the risk for cancers in the skin. So better UVA filters really give you more protection from that. And that's why for me, I need those better filters because in my head, that's doing a lot better for me. Let's get back to a little bit more upbeat subject matter. Kind of threw a lot at you right there with the sunscreen filters and how they work and whatnot. Let's talk about recommendations. That's the big thing with this. You really need to be wearing sunscreen, but how do you find which one that you need? I'm gonna start off by saying, I'm never gonna recommend you luxury sunscreens. You should not be paying more than $20 for a sunscreen unless you really want to. Because for the matter of the fact is, you can find a great, amazing, high effective sunscreen within your parameters for less than $20. Starting off with sunscreens best for oily, acne prone skin like mine. We have the Misha All Around Safe Blood Essence Sun Milk, the Sam's Eagle Earth Power Aqua Sun Gel, and the Cray Beauty Beat Shield slash Beat the Sun. Super lightweight, sink into the skin really quickly, great for oily skin. Beyond that, for more normal skin types, but still great for a wider range of skin types, you have the Black Girl Sunscreen, which Black owned skincare brand. Neutrogena's Hydro Boost, the Prius Intella Green Level Safe Sun. Those are really great all around approachable sunscreens. The Neutrogena and Black Girl Sunscreen are US formulation, so they're gonna have more of the outdated sunscreen filters, but they're really accessible in that you can get them at Target, Walmart, easily. All the sunscreens I'm gonna mention are easily accessible online as well, whether through iHerb, Yes Style, or Amazon. And then if you have more dry skin, so therefore you need a little bit more nourishment, hydration, moisturization, again, Pregnos Intelica Green Level Safe Sun, great option. The Briore Aqua Witch Watery Essence Sunscreen. La Roche-Posay is Anthelios, which is a huge sunscreen line, so find one that works for you there. Hamish's Artless Glow Base, amazing radiant finish on that one. It actually has a little bit of illuminating finish on it, so I wouldn't wear that by itself necessarily. And then Costa Rex's Aloe Soothing Sun Cream and Claire's UV Essence. All of these chemical filter sunscreens, no way cast at all. Great for all skin tones. Now let's get into physical sunscreens. Um, not my tea, not my brand. I don't use a lot of these. I've tried a handful and I've talked about those on my channel. First and foremost, the Pareto Comfy Water Sunblock. That is one that everyone's talking about right now. Pareto is that girl for sunscreen right now. They have great chemical and physical sunscreens. I just ordered this Pareto one. I'm gonna be trying it soon on my channel, so stay tuned for that. But I hear it has no way cast. The A2000 Sun Prize, one that I've used, great for oily skin types, super lightweight, powdery matte finish, mad white cast. The Biore Aqua Rich Watery Gel Sunscreen, one from Hiram, skincare by Hiram, is the Biosound Squalene Plus Zinc Mineral Sunscreen. Apparently no way cast on that one either for a physical sunscreen. Don't know about that one though. It is a much higher price point. I'm not recommending it. Higher is though, so that's my excuse for that one. Delta MD is a very all around approachable sunscreen that um, Dr. Dre has talked about, but also other people have as, as well. They have tinted versions as well. It's great for sensitive skin. Australian Gold Botanical Tinted Sunscreen is one I've heard a lot about as well. Super, super affordable. I've heard this one was amazingly underneath makeup and it also comes in a tinted formula as well. One that I'm really interested to try um, that I've uh, just saw James talk about and I've heard a little bit about this brand recently is Some By Me their Chusika Mineral 100 sunscreen. Um, apparently no white cast for that one either. James Welsh, tannish skin tone. He applied it. It looked very good on his skin tone. So. And then another one by Hiram is a Cerave Mineral Sunscreen. I'm not gonna try it though. He did say it has a white cast, so. But as I mentioned, a lot of these are from other beauty um, influencers on YouTube. So if there's someone you like to watch or someone with a specific skin type you're looking for, look around. These are just ones that I've tried that I recommend or that I've heard about. But you got Susan Yara, James Welsh, Dr. Dre, Lab Muffin Beauty Science is my favorite person on YouTube just because she's a PhD in chemistry that speaks skincare in a way that I like to in terms of like the chemical formulation of it all. Joe's Logic versus Luxury is a great channel to look for for sunscreen recs as well. And then Skincare by Hiram. So key takeaways for all of this. Sunscreen is important. I didn't realize that for a long time necessarily, even once I got into skincare. And my interest in sunscreen kind of started though when I was much younger. I remember there was a phase where I was really into models and fashion. And I was reading about 
Brazilian models and kind of like, what are your skincare tips? Like, what are your, some of your like hacks? And a lot of them said that they learned from a young age, wear sunscreen on your face. I didn't understand why necessarily until now that I understand like the importance of sunscreen, but like, look at these supermodels with amazing flawless skin. They age so well, even though they're from really tropical climates in Brazil. Wish I would have started sooner, but I started wearing sunscreen in my early twenties. So I'm not bugging too much. At the end of the day, when looking at sunscreens though, what matters is find a formula that works for you, that does it for you. I have multiple sunscreens depending on what mood I'm in or what's happening that day or the season, wear an ample amount. On top of that, be mindful about what's exposed. Your neck is what shows the first signs of aging. Don't forget your ears. I've heard a lot of dermatologists say there's a lot of people who get cancerous melanoma around the ear because they neglect their ears. Don't forget the back of your neck. Something that I don't do enough is back my hands even. Hands also show the signs of age as well. Look for ingredients that have antioxidants in them as well. Those antioxidants, especially like vitamin C, antioxidants offer the extra electron that free radicals need. Therefore, it gives you added protection underneath sunscreen. Vitamin C and sunscreen, amazing pair in the morning. And something I wanna say is you might hear a little bit of people saying, you gotta put sunscreen on this much before going outside. You gotta get your sunscreen dried down 15, 30 minutes. In reality, in my personal opinion, and I've seen some people share this as well, is as soon as you put sunscreen down and it forms that nice even film of protection and it sets, you should be good. My goal with this is to make you really informed consumers to understand what it is inside your products that you're buying and how to be smart consumers when buying skincare products. Ignore the marketing on the front, learn what's really in the products and how they work for you. That's gonna be the most helpful in building a skincare routine that's tailored specifically to your needs and to your wants. If you guys enjoyed this, again, give it a thumbs up. I love making these videos. The Simplified Series is something I really want to do for viewers on YouTube in order for them to learn. So if you like that, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I do the next Simplified video or post any other videos in general. And yeah, if you wanna see anything specific for the Simplified series or any other videos period, just leave those down in the description box. I always respond to comments. I'm always checking and refreshing and seeing what's happening on my channel. So yeah, um, I really appreciate you guys watching and wear your sunscreen, period, point blank. Wear your sunscreen. I don't care if you got an excuse, wear your sunscreen.